your girl D. We're here with a bow gown. We're here as a Princess Tiana from The Princess and the Frog. So, how did this come about? This was a pure impulse. And um, what I'm going to make an official term as an insanity build. There's speed builds out there, but this was an insanity build as this gown from start to finish was created in approximately 18 days. No days off. Well, two days off because I actually did get sick for the first time since October. And I was down and out for a while. But so there was two days I just I didn't touch my sewing machine. I didn't do anything. Literally all I could do was drink soup and sleep in between working. So anyhow, let's talk about this beautiful dress. Inspiration behind it. At Planet Comic Con, I ran into um, some old cosplay friends and made a new cosplay friend, all of which were phenomenal princesses. And I noticed in attending Planet Comic Con all three days, I didn't see any princesses who looked like me. We do, in princess history, have two very prominent princesses, two very prominent black princesses from the 90s, Roger and Hammerstein's um, Cinderella played by Brandy with uh, Whitney Houston as the fairy godmother. And then from 2007, we have Princess Tiana from The Princess and the Frog. And so I decided I need a Princess Tiana. I need a Princess Tiana who looks like me in Kansas City. Why not become her myself? But let's go ahead and challenge ourselves to get this done in time for a local event, Plaza PopCon, um, put on by the Kansas City Public Library at their Country Club Plaza location. And I decided to go ahead and go for it. I've never made a ball gown in any way, shape, nor form. I've done quite a bit of sewing. And this was quite the learning curve um, in regards of making layers, understanding the functionality of a ball gown. And also in researching, there are not any video tutorials on how to make a Tiana dress. Not a single one. I have searched YouTube. I have searched Pinterest. I have searched Instagram. I have searched Google. The only thing I could find were two actual tutorials that listed the components of what it is that you would need to make. A few hand sketched stencils and patterns out there, but they were in foreign languages. So I documented this entire process because, again, there's no tutorials out there. I don't know why there's not a tutorial, why there's not a pattern out there. There's no patterns for Tiana. There's patterns for Belle. There's patterns for Cinderella. There's patterns for Snow White. There's patterns for Rapunzel. There's patterns for Aurora. There's patterns for ballrooms and ball gowns and other princesses, but there's not an actual Princess Tiana pattern. At least it's one, one that's produced by the prominent fabric makers or pattern makers such as Simplicity or McCall's or anything like that. There's not a dedicated Tiana pattern. So we're going to go through this and the functionality of the dress. Cool? Cool. <clears throat> so first of all, this particular version of Tiana is compiled of a hoop skirt, which I made from scratch, a three-tiered petticoat, which I also made from scratch, the skirt, the petal detail and then the leaf detail with the bodice. Most ball gowns are constructed with a bodice that sits on top of the skirt and the skirt has multiple layers. I in actually attached my leaves to my bodice and you're going to actually see the video slide to the left or maybe slide to the right crisscross Charlotte Brown. Anyways, you're going to see the video jump over because I'm actually, I filmed as much as I possibly could while making this and I wanted to talk through it with you as well. So the hoop skirt was a little bit of a learning curve. I followed a pattern, um, not a pattern, but a tutorial by and I'll, I'll link it in the description box, but it was a, a, <clears throat> a seamstress who made a hoop skirt for her daughter to help flare out her dresses. And so hoop skirts require some math and there are multiple layers compiled within this hoop skirt. <clears throat> oh good, you're gonna see the bad side. <clears throat> 
So the first thing that I did wrong, the hoop skirt has one, this, two, three, four. This hoop skirt has five rings, five various rings that are all um, various spaces apart from one another to help control how it is that you wanted the hoop. The hoop skirt itself is approximately 130 inches long and about 40 to 45 inches high. Um, I had to take measurements of where it is that I wanted the hoop skirt to sit at my waist and where it is I wanted to flare out. And then also take measurements of diameter, how big around I wanted it to be. You also have to measure um, the cloth that the hoop skirt is made of is unfortunately Un and I say unfortunately because it was so expensive. Um, unfortunately, it's satin. And if I had known better, I would not have picked up satin. But I like it because it was comfortable and it didn't scratch my legs or anything like that. However, the shit frayed like it was nothing on them unfinished edges. So pick your hoop skirt, pick your hoop skirt cloth carefully. <clears throat> so there are one, two, yeah, five rings. Um, the rings are ribbon that was sewn into place. I have a very large um, pattern cutting board made from cardboard that's about seven feet long and about three or four feet tall that takes up literally my entire bed. And so I just laid that out, pinned the ribbon in place and sewed all of that down in the various areas. Where I went wrong and where I should have paid a little bit more attention to the tutorial is that for the rings, the rings were, um, the hoops, are this uh, Pez pipe that I got from Home Depot. And each of the Pez pipes are secured with some dowels that were the same width. These dowels, um, sorry, this Pez pipe was a quarter of an inch and they're five feet long. And I got, I think maybe eight or nine of them. They're really easy to cut. Um, I was able to actually hack at them with some scissors and screw it into place and everything like that. Um, but that's just me and I've got some, some really tough grade scissors. So <clears throat> what you need to do is get as much ribbon as it is for the length across. So if this is 130 inches across, that's like 10 and 11, 10 and a half feet. So that's how much ribbon I needed for however many layers of or tiers of uh, hoops that is. And what I did wrong is I just laid down the ribbon for the length of the rod that I needed. What you actually need to do is have it go all the way across. And then as you feed in your rod, it will bunch up. And that's what's gonna happen with the extra fabric. What I wound up doing was cutting the shit and I had to like Frankenstein it back together, which is fine because it's underneath the petticoat. So no one's gonna actually know but that's where I messed up. The petticoat itself is three tiers of tool. And so I have some neon green tool, which is really pretty when I twirl, you see this little sneak peek. And then I have actual petticoat netting that I gathered. Um, the way that I gathered the, um, oh, and sorry. And then the petticoat itself, I um, the base for the petticoat, I made from a pattern of a circle skirt. And what I did for that pattern is I picked the largest size that it came in and then added like three inches onto it just to be on the safe side. And so for gathering, what I did was I first sewed the tool um, so some thread on there and what I did was um, I used a zigzag stitch and I fed floss in between the zigzag stitch that way instead of having to pull the thread and wasting a whole bunch of thread having to clip that and throw that away I could just do the floss it's like a buck at the dollar store cheaper than that if you can find it and it made it really easy to gather plus since it was um, wax covered it slid in the thread a whole lot easier too so I had the, the layer of green, I had the long, I left this really long, I didn't cut this up, um, but the long layer of the regular netting. And then I had <coughs> this other light tool, but unfortunately 
because I was stupid, I picked glittery tulle. My whole floor is covered in glitter because of this shit. Do not buy glittery tulle, ever, for anything. You never need to, there's not a reason. I promise, you don't need glittery tool for a damn thing. You don't. And what I did was I applied the same concept as I did for the top of the petticoat. <clears throat> I mean, the, the top of the hoop skirt. I just sewed a little bit of a waistband. I fed elastic through that and kept that moving. For the skirt, <clears throat> the skirt itself I fashioned from a medieval dress pattern that I found for a dollar at Scraps KC. Scraps KC is kind of like a consignment thrift store, but for arts and crafts and teacher supplies, it is phenomenal. I absolutely love it. So that pattern I got for a dollar, and what I did was I just took the base of the skirt, what it called for, and I actually, since I had the petticoat ready, I laid the pattern pieces out at the waistline and measured how far down I wanted it to go. And then before I actually, um, when I cut the pattern out, good night, love you. What I also did was I took some extra um, drafting paper and I extended it however long I needed it to go. So that way it would meet the floor with the petticoat and then I added on um, an extra inch at the top for the waistband and then at the bottom to be hemmed. <clears throat> Another thing that I absolutely love about this skirt is I gave it pockets. That was a non-negotiable. And so I fashioned, I just drafted the pocket pieces. What I did was I set my phone down and measured how big and how wide that was and then um, cut excess fabric around there so I had a deep enough pocket to where I could put my phone and a water bottle if I wanted. There was someone at NakaCon who said every pocket that she puts in her cosplay is always big enough to put a water bottle in there. That's why I got the idea from. I cannot remember her name, but she's awesome. And she had a really cool cosplay at Naka. I just can't remember um, what her name is. So that is the skirt. <clears throat> what I also wound up doing is I, um, when I laid the pattern piece down on the fabric, what I did was I cut it on the fold. So instead of cutting a single piece of fabric, which is what the pattern normally called for, I actually cut it on the fold so it would be big enough to go around and have a little bit of extra room so that it would be all flowy, swirly, twirly whenever I twirled. So there was that too. And so I cut um, the pattern for that skirt called for one front piece, one back piece, and then one side piece for each. What I wound up doing was cutting one back piece, two front pieces, so I could have enough room in the front. And then I cut um, a side piece and a side piece, and then the pockets. And then again, sa same with the concept of the petticoat and the hoop skirt, I cut um, hemmed a waistband up here and I put elastic through there and measured elastic through my waist and tighten that up, all of that good stuff. The most difficult part was the bodice, but we'll get to that next. For the petals, <clears throat> the petals um, that Tiana has actually are a little bit longer than these and they are actually are a little bit closer together, but I was low on fabric. So these petals, similar to um, the pattern, what I did was I measured how long I wanted the petal to be, and I freehanded this. Not gonna lie, I just sketched out the shape that I wanted the petal to be, and as I cut it out, that's when I straightened up the edges. Um, and when I started to cut the fabric, and then pinned it into place, I pinned each petal into place first, before I moved on to see how it is that I wanted it to lay. And as I pinned it, I saw that I, I didn't like the length of it. So I actually shortened a few of these petals up. The longer ones are in the back. And so this is just laid onto a basic piece of um, fabric scrap left over. This is quilting fabric, by the way. Um, the skirt is the glitter bug yellow fabric that they have at Joann's. But this is a quilting fabric. It had like, it didn't really have much get, give to it, just a little bit. But um, the petals are two-sided and everything was pressed with an iron 
all that good stuff. Then came this part, <coughs> which were the leaves. Originally, I drafted six leaves to go all the way around, but in my sleepiness, because I was sleep deprived while compiling this, in my sleepiness, I left a piece of fabric in the laundry room and forgot to go back and look for it. So I actually just only have five petals to go around. <coughs> And so these petals, um, I also freehanded this pattern. Each of these leaves has a very thin layer of batting in there. Um, I picked the quilting batting and I just did one single layer, just enough to give them um, a little bit of a puff. When I was pinning the leaves in place to see how I wanted them to lay, I had already sewn one of them together and it wasn't pressed down completely flat like these petals here. And I kind of did a survey on Instagram. Let me get my phone while I'm thinking about it. <clears throat> I did a survey on Instagram in a poll in my stories and said, hey, I actually kind of like the leaves puffy. Excuse me, do you guys like them puffy too or should I, um, press them all the way out and a lot of them like them puffy but one of my followers and friends on Instagram if I can find her name Keely Shoop K-E-E-L-E-Y-S-H-O-U-P Keely Shoop suggested to me I almost feel like if you leave it puffy you could put a thin layer of batting in there and it might have a really cool textured look and so I said that was the winner Thank you so much, Keely. I greatly appreciate it. And so because of her, that is why we put the batting in here. And I really like how it gives the leaves this effect. I really, really do. Once I was done with that, then I had to make the bodice. I'll go ahead and take, oh, maybe. So the bodice itself is actually what I did. Let's see if I can twist you around, young lady. The bodice itself is one single layer. There's not enough room. She's so fluffy. One single layer. <laughs> I've got enough of a twist. And so what I did, most princess dresses and ball gowns um, actually have like corsetry here in the back with, um, the little eye eyelets and stuff like that to lace and stitch it up. And I do not have that kind of time, nor did I have that patience or knowledge. Grommets, those two. And so what I decided to do was I um, used pattern pieces from my other pattern that I uh, made a dress out of, um, my um, Neo Queen Serenity, that dress, since I know that that was built for me. Um, so that particular dress, I actually um, took the, because those pattern pieces actually go from chest all the way to the floor. And so what I did was I just went from like the waistline up and traced up and transferred that to pattern paper. Except what I did was I scalloped the armpit part just a little bit more. And on the back, what I did was I added a piece of elastic here, so that way it would stay up and stretch in the back. That pattern calls for a zipper to be in the back. What I did was, as you can see, I added a side zipper so I could get in and out of this a little bit better. And once I added the side zipper, um, actually no, I didn't add the side zipper first. I actually put the leaves in place. The leaf pattern, as we twist back, the leaves were um, layered. This V was on accident, but that's fine. It's whatever. And so each of these leaves, um, this outermost one represents exactly how big each of these are. So I did two green ones and three white ones. Um, the white ones I finished, they were the same pattern as the quilting pattern, but I didn't have enough to make it um, two layers. 
So it's just one single piece. But what I did was around the edge of it, I used one of my fancier stitches to help ensure that it wouldn't fray. And then what I did was I um, referenced a picture of Tiana and I did the layering for the three white pieces and pinned that into place on top of the bodice. I didn't pin it like on the bodice itself just yet. I wanted to get the layering right first. And then I put the green pieces down so that I had everything pinned in one single piece. And then after that, what I did was I made sure that the bodice part, the top part, fit around me properly with the elastic before I installed the zipper. And then once I installed the zipper, um, I went ahead and pinned this whole section on top of the actual booby part. I'd actually um, taken it in at the, I guess at the nipples maybe. I had taken it in about like a three quarters of an inch to ensure that it would stay up here pretty well. But I wound up taking those seams out because of how like massively tight it was just because we've got a lot to work with up here. So there's that. So that, that happened. And then once I had the bodice all stitched together, then I took the leaf and you're gonna see an unfinished seam here, but you also see the padding because I believe in transparency. And so what I did was I sewed the leaf off at the base and sealed all the batting in there. And then I laid it down in this method, laid it flat um, where I wanted it to fall on top of, yeah, like these are the rest of the leaves up here that I didn't trim off because I didn't have time because the bitch was tired. So I laid it up here um, in this method. So that way the seam would show up like that. And then what I did was I would do the exact same thing for every other leaf. Um, and the corner I kind of rounded off and it would lay flat. And so I got all the way around. Again, I, I forgot that I had six leaves planned, but I still was able to make it work with five. So I'm sure it would probably look better with six. Oh well. And then my pride and joy of this, besides the pockets, are these gloves. So the gloves, I actually wound up making um, the first set. I w wound up being a fail and it wound up um, fraying. And what I have learned when you're making gloves is that Number one, your gloves need to be a stretchy material. Um, I did use Yaya Han's glove pattern for these. But what I wound up doing, because her glove pattern, like her top piece and her bottom piece are slightly different sizes. And her gloves are kind of like a one size fits all. So what I wound up doing on the first go round, I cut them the exact sizes that she had for the gloves and I didn't like it. And so I wound up going with a little bit more of a stretchier pattern. And what I did, um, there was a young lady at the cutting counter at Joanne and she said, um, she suggested with when sewing the glove to actually use a piece of paper towel as you're getting around those weird edges. So that way it doesn't fray while you're trying to sew. Cause my, my sewing machine, it kept like messing up on the fingers of the glove. What I also heard from another one of my friends from NakaCon, um, I believe it was Ashley Walker who said this, but also you can trace your pattern out, but don't actually cut the fingers. Just like do a, an oblong shape. Don't cut the fingers until after you're done stitching. That has changed my life. I wish I would have known that first because I probably wouldn't have to have made another pair of gloves. But the thing about these gloves is that, do you see this green? Do you see how it's very close? We dyed this fabric fam. We dyed this fabric um, with rich synthetic dye and it was a fail at first because I was sleeping. It was 2.30 in the morning and I read misread tablespoons. 
instead of teaspoons. So they were like a really bright yellow green because I used way too much yellow. And so I re-dyed them with the right fabric, um, per, with the right formula, and then wound up adding in like an additional cap full of green as I went. And then that's how they came up with this lovely color. What I did was I stitched them and sewed them and finished them first and then dyed them. So I didn't have to like dye the fabric first and then wait for it to dry and then try to sew it together. I sewed them in their entirety first and then stitched them. And so I'm very, very freaking proud of those gloves. For our crown here, um, this was also a kind of a shot in the dark. So the crown itself Go ahead and remove this very carefully. This was five pieces of the same fabric that I used for the bodice and the leaves. So this was five pieces of, um, of leaves and the same interfacing that I use for my um, headwear pieces, um, that foam that's a little bit thick, that's what's inside of each of these. Also on the back, are three different wig combs to help keep it in place and some of these little um pearl details that i cut off of um like one of those fake flower flourish things um and but it was thin enough as well as with the wig combs it was thin enough to where i could go over it with a zigzag stitch and so the wig combs and these little pearl things that are wire are actually stitched into place with this so i made each leaf first turned each leaf um right side out and then i put them together at first I put them together with an extra piece of fabric and I fed a headband through there, but the leaves were too tall. So what I did was I just literally chopped off, I chopped off about maybe two and a half inches of that one at first. It just wound up with this and I really like this because of how, even though Tiana like does have like a, a headband kind of thing, I like how it literally just like blends with my hair. I really love that. And so this was another little pride and joy of mine. And I um, I finished the edges with a lighter to keep them from fraying because this green fabric frays a whole lot. And then our um, Lily friend here, she actually is two separate lilies that were, um, I don't know where all this fuzziness came from. She was two separate lilies that were um on one single stem from michael's on one fake stem and so i taped them together with some fabric tape and then um since it was a fake flower fed a safety pin through one of the flower petals and pinned it right there which is conveniently covering up the one mistake on the leaves that i could not disguise so you know that was like a win-win situation right there other than that that is Miss Tiana all together. Yay. So there's that. As an added bonus, made this shirt. And so um, I took um, a heat transfer vinyl from Vinyl Frog that I ordered on Amazon. This uh, glitter fabric or this glitter transfer vinyl. And I used a very small piece of gold. Um, what I did, because my printer um, is out of ink, I actually brought up a funky font on my laptop and then very lightly kind of etched and traced that. Then used my ruler to completely sketch everything out. I made pattern pieces that way and then transferred it onto the vinyl using my exacto knife to cut the letters out of the vinyl and then used some tape and glued um, taped everything down how I wanted it. This shirt started off as a heather gray and similar to the leaves. I don't know if it's the same green. No, it's not quite the same green family. This one, this one is a little bit more yellow, but you know, still. Um, 
but I went ahead and dyed this from a heather gray to this green. Um, in Wreck-It Ralph 2, Ralph Breaks the Internet, all of the Disney princesses are sitting around in like comfy casual clothes. And Tiana has on a shirt that says Nola um, for New Orleans, Louisiana, since that's where she's from. But I don't have any ties to Louisiana. So that's why we have Kansas City, Missouri over here, KC Mo, just saying. So that's my little, little dig at that. So I can do some um, Tiana, um, come casual Tiana cosplays in the future. Um, things that went wrong, again with the hoop skirt, cutting that fabric too soon. Um, and then I did make the hoop skirt too long and what I wound up doing, I just hacked off that bottom row that I didn't need. And I should have hacked it and also um, re-hemmed it and I didn't and the frayed edges wound up collecting a lot of those little brown fuzzy things that are falling from the trees right now when I was at my photo shoot. Um, the what else went wrong? The um, bust I would have liked to have shaped a little bit more booby shaped but this will do. This will do. I definitely would have had a um, hook and eye closure above the zipper. I actually will probably still install one right there because there are a couple times where my boobs are just like, hey, you're just massive. We're going to pop out of this dress. Don't care. Um, and then also, if you're going to be in a ball gown, have a fan, please. Thank you to Luna Flair for bringing her extra one, although we are now prepared today. You know, because I've got a neon green fan somewhere, but I don't know where she went. And when I showed up at the event, I was just like, oh my gosh. And she's like, oh honey, here, here, have this fan. I had an extra one and I was like, thank you, you're the best. So I yeah, definitely have a fan. Um, and um, that's about it. So um, again, you will see, you will have, or should have seen footage of how I drafted my patterns. Um, I am happy to answer whatever questions, either here in the comments. Um, Instagram's probably going to be the most direct, just in case I don't make it here to YouTube just in time. But um, hit me up on Instagram if you have any other comments or concerns on how it is to do this. Because like I said, there's not any Tiana patterns out there. There's not any Tiana tutorials out there. And when I was doing a little bit of live streaming, other people were confirming that like, yo, I haven't seen anyone actually break down how to do this. So that's another reason behind this video. I wanted to break down how to do this and I hope that you find it helpful. You don't have to do this exactly like me because again, this is my first attempt and it still was functional. You know, I'm sure, you know, like if you're gonna do it, I want you to do it better than me. I wanna hear how it is that you improvise, what it is that worked for you. Cause you know, I might mere make this whole damn thing or I might, Decide to do another princess in the future. I don't know. I'm, I'm pretty happy with being Tiana. You know, I'm not gonna lie. But I could be Cinderella if I wanted to, or Sleeping Beauty, or Belle, or Snow White. You know, I mean, there's a whole bunch of princesses out there. You know, but but I, if you're gonna do it, do it better than me. I want to hear how it is that it worked for you as well. Um, other than that, I have a. I need to extend a huge thank you to Chelsea Fuller, Miss Sheru for her love and support. Um, for my little insider circle of folks who always watch my behind the scenes and work in progress, my Michelle Heath, um, Ashley Proctor, best friend, other best friend. Shout out to all of the little girls who love being princesses. Um, I did. Um, on a whim, I recorded a few videos for three particular little girls and sent them to their moms so that they, they could see a actual princess and um, personalize those videos for them while I was Tiana. Um, so to Ashley, Danielle, and Tiandria, I love you and I love your daughters and they are beautiful and wonderful. And um, if anything, that, that right there made it worthwhile, just knowing that I helped to make those little kids days. Like, yes, I, I don't recommend an insanity build. I don't recommend sewing for 18 days um, with limited sleep or through an illness. But, eh, sometimes. But the great thing 
even with it being an insanity build, or even if you took a year to do it, the great thing about it is that when you're done, it's so, like, you're so satisfied, especially with seeing your work. And I have to say, as, <laughs> as true of Tiana and her prominent song during the movie, we're almost there. I had to keep telling myself over and over again, I'm almost there. I am almost there. Yeah, but hey, here we are. So, again, I'm happy to answer whatever questions you got. Concerns, thoughts, suggestions, and stuff. I am now going to edit this video and go to sleep. So, mwah! Have a wonderful night.